This week, Jensen Wong took the stage at CES 2026 and announced something that should have made headlines, but of course didn't. Uh, not the new chip, not the self-driving car. No, the thing nobody's talking about is buried in a single sentence about water temperature. Meanwhile, across 11 states, farmers and mayors just killed $98 billion in AI dreams. Two-thirds of all data center projects blocked or delayed. Politicians who back them are getting voted out left and right. And somewhere in a quarterly filing, NVIDIA admitted something about their $100 billion investment in open AI that uh, investors probably should have read more carefully. Welcome to Rod Miller AI, where the future of humanity is being decided by people who think electricity grows on trees and reported on by a guy who thinks vodka is a food group. That would be me. Hit that thumbs up button if you want to see a free strip show and you're gullible. Subscribe if you haven't, because more than likely those two black suburbans outside your window aren't meant for you. Share this with someone who thinks AI is something sailors say to their captain. AI, Captain. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, last time. This is Rod Miller AI. This is your brain after watching Rod Miller AI. Any questions? Everyone's talking about AI like the bottleneck is compute. Who has the best chips? Who has the most GPUs? Who's training the biggest model? It's not compute. The bottleneck is the thing that makes compute possible. The thing nobody in Silicon Valley wants to talk about because it's boring and involves permits and angry farmers with pitchforks. Electricity. Between April and June of last year, 20 data center projects worth $98 billion were blocked or delayed across 11 states. That's two-thirds of all projects being tracked by Data Center Watch. Two-thirds. Residents cited rising electricity costs, water consumption, noise, and loss of farmland. The mayor of Matthews, North Carolina, told the LA Times that politicians backing these projects risk getting voted out. In Indiana alone, more than a dozen projects failed to get permits. Real estate firms are now considering selling land they bought for data centers because they can't get approval to build on it. And here's the fun part. Google wants to increase computing capacity 1,000-fold within five years. OpenAI's building Stargate, along with others, the largest AI infrastructure project in history. W with what power? From where? With whose permission? The grid can't keep up with current demand the way it is, and they want 1,000 times more capacity and they can't get approval to build a data center in Indiana. This week, Jensen Wong announced Vera Rubin, NVIDIA's next generation chip. It's a beautiful piece of silicon, absolute monster of a processor, and it uses twice the power of the previous generation. Twice. And Jensen called it a miracle that airflow is about the same. The miracle is that you're doubling power consumption while communities are blocking data centers because their electricity bills are going up. The miracle is that you need twice the watts at the exact moment when nobody will let you build the buildings to use them. The Trump administration just launched an $80 billion nuclear program, the largest since the 1970s, specifically to power AI. There is a proposal to repurpose retired Navy nuclear reactors to supply 450 to 520 megawatts to data centers in Tennessee. We're literally talking about putting warship reactors in fields to power chatbots. Well, because the alternative, getting permits for normal power plants and data centers, has become almost politically impossible. Now let's talk about NVIDIA's investment strategy again, because it's beautiful in a terrifying, I can't believe this is legal kind of way. NVIDIA, listen to these numbers. NVIDIA participated in 67 venture capital deals in 2025. That's up from 54 in 2024. They've invested in basically everyone. OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, Mistral, Cursor, Figure AI, Perplexity, Cohere, Scale AI, CoreWeave, and the list goes on. They call it expanding the AI ecosystem. It's not expanding the ecosystem. It's financing customers. It works thusly and so. NVIDIA commits up to $10 billion. In return, 
Anthropic commits to spending $30 billion on compute, specifically Microsoft Azure, which runs on NVIDIA chips, plus NVIDIA's own Grace Blackwell and Vera Rubin systems. So NVIDIA puts in $10 billion and gets $30 billion in chip orders. It's not an investment. That's a pre-sale with a bow on it. XAI, NVIDIA invests in Elon's $6 billion round. The deal was, and I'm quoting the article here, structured to help XAI purchase more NVIDIA gear. <laughs> they don't even hide it. The investment contract literally says, use this money to buy our stuff. In OpenAI, NVIDIA announced they'd invest up to $100 billion over time. That sounds huge. Then in their quarterly filing, the document investors are supposed to read, they wrote, there is no assurance that any investment will be completed on expected terms, if at all. Announce $100 billion, hedge in the footnotes, classic. That's worth the nickel. Tragic. Classic and tragic. Crusoe and InScale. NVIDIA invested in both. Both are building data centers for OpenAI's Stargate project. So NVIDIA is financing the buildings that will house NVIDIA chips that OpenAI will buy with money that partly came from NVIDIA. It's a circle. We've talked about it several times. It's a beautiful, elegant, legally distinct circle. But here's where it breaks down. All of this, every chip sale, every investment return, Every piece of the circular empire re requires data centers, physical buildings with power and permits. And two-thirds of those buildings are getting blocked by farmers who don't want their electricity bills to double so Mark Zuckerberg can train a chatbot on the young and the restless in General Hospital. NVIDIA can finance every eye company on Earth. They can invest $10 billion here and $6 billion there and promise another $100 billion somewhere else. But if the buildings can't get built, None of it matters. The mayor of a town you've never heard of in North Carolina has more power over AI's future than Sam Altman right now. Because Sam Altman needs electricity, and electricity needs permits. And permits need votes, and votes come from people who are pissed that their power bills went up 40% so a data center could train a model that writes mediocre poetry. So what did Jensen announce at CES while the Empire's foundations are cracking? Consumer Electronics Show, if you didn't know, at CES. It's going on. That's wrapping up today as I record this. It's in Las Vegas, and uh, it, it's worth looking at if you haven't looked on uh, YouTube or other places for, uh, for what's coming. That's always kind of interesting to see. Anyway, first, Vera Rubin is in full production. 1,152 GPUs per pod, twice the power of Blackwell, cooled with 113 degree hot water because they can't afford to run chillers at that scale. They're cooling supercomputers with water that's almost too hot to take a shower in because anything colder would use too much electricity. Second, Alpamo. I thought that was a dog food. Anyway, the world's first thinking, reasoning, autonomous vehicle AI. It's going into Mercedes-Benz cars in quarter one, in Europe in their cars in quarter two, in Asia by the end of the year. And Jensen said something remarkable about safety. Quote, Nobody knows until you drive it forever that it's going to be perfectly safe. You think you hate it now, just wait till you drive it. And that's the pitch. We have no idea if this is safe, but we're putting it on the road anyway. Good luck, everyone. He explained they built a second safety system underneath the AI, a classical self-driving stack that takes over when the AI isn't confident. And it took them six or seven years to build this backup system. So the AI drives the car, unless the AI doesn't trust itself. Maybe the AI has been drinking or something, I'm not sure. Then a different system drives the car. And somewhere a human is supposedly in the loop, probably scared to death, hunkered down in the back seat. And nobody knows if it's safe or not. But it just got rated the world's safest car by NCAAP, whatever that means, the National Car Association ass people. Yeah, I don't know. Third, Jensen is talking to robots on stage now. He literally said to a robot, Did you tell R2-D2 you're going to be here and C-3PO? I, I, did he do the same shtick last year at CES? <laughs> and later, hurry up, I've got a lot of stuff to cover. Come on, hurry. 
He's yelling at robots to move faster. You know, those robots ought to just kung fu his ass, his leather-wearing ass. Fourth, Agenic Chips Designers. Jensen announced that AI agents will help design the next generation of chips. Quote, we're going to have agentic chip designers and system designers working with us. So AI is designing the chips that run the AI that designs the chips. So what's actually happening here? Everyone thinks the AI race is about compute. Who has the best models? Who has the most chips? Who's closest to AGI? Bah. It's not. The race is about power. Literal, physical, come out of your wall electricity. Compute is becoming commoditized. If you have money, you can buy GPUs. Even China ordered 2 million of them before China's own regulators told them to stop. <laughs> That's a great story. We don't want your stinking computer chips. We don't need no stinking badges. Data centers are blueprints. You can build them anywhere. If you can get the permits, if you can get the power. And that's where everything breaks down. The most sophisticated technology humanity has ever built. Trillion parameter models, quantum computing, robots that Jensen literally yells at to move faster. All of it depends on getting a zoning permit approved by a guy named Doug in Indiana who's pissed about his electric bill. Doug doesn't care about their tensor cores. Doug doesn't care about their world models. Doug cares that his bill went up 40%. And now some tech bro wants to build a warehouse full of space heaters next to his soybean field. Doug votes. Doug's neighbors vote. And Doug's marriage has figured out that saying no to data centers is the fastest way to get reelected. And that mayor likes his office. We're proposing to put aircraft carrier reactors in Tennessee fields to power chatbots because asking Doug nicely didn't work. Jensen's on stage cooling supercomputers with water that's almost too hot to shower in because cold water would have cost too much electricity that Doug won't let him have. Sam Altman's building Stargate with SoftBank and Oracle. Doug's building a coalition of angry farmers. I know who I'm betting on. Compute is the product. Power is the currency. But permission is the gatekeeper. I need a drink and possibly a permit. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>